Okay, excellent. How's the volume of my voice? Are you okay? It's good. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, so uh, let me change my. Okay, so here we have the lecture is lecture number eleven. Welcome to lecture number eleven. Today we will talk about cell division, the cell division, and in relation with the DNA. What are the uh, all the events that happen during the cell division? And the second part, I'm going to switch that in a few moments, is about the skin. We are going to talk about the skin. Because of that, we are going to start with the skin. Okay? And then we go to the cell division. You okay with that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So talking about the skin and the skin disorders, this is one of the uh, parts of your, of your... I'm going to give you general things, then we are going to go more detail into the nursing process. You know, the skin is the largest, actually, organ of your, of your systems. And the skin is going to take, uh, it's going to, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment, just this to see all of you, I like to see all of you, okay. The skin is the largest organ in, uh, in your body. It's going to take about 20 feet, lo uh, a square feet, 20 feet, a square feet. So you can do a very nice rack, a nice, carpet from the skin, okay? 21 feet square. So that is what is going to be the skin. The skin, just I want you to imagine the skin as a suit, as a, as a capsule that is going to cover all your body. This is, write down this please, is the first line of defense. First line of defense. First line of defense. So from this first line of defense, the number, the number of uh, cells in the skin are going to be about 350 million cells. So that represents that every, every uh, person in the United States, in the United States, how many people we are? We are 350 million. So every individual, each of you is a cell of the skin. So that is what is going to be for. Second. The skin is going to basically not be permanent. The skin is going to exfoliate. How many of you, they have facial? I have facial when I was a long time ago, okay? But now I don't have facials anymore. Okay, this facial, how, how often you can give have a facial? Okay, facial, probably you don't know why, because you don't need it, that's why. <laughs> So facial, you can do it once a month. And why I'm doing that? You know, when I say something, it's because something is coming with you, okay? And we are going to slough off a skin. We are going to slough off the skin about 30 to 30,000 to 40,000 every minute, every minute. So we are changing. But one thing I want you to, to realize about this, if you are losing cells, these cells, they need to be replaced, right? So you cannot slough and slough and lose all your skin. You, that cells, they need to be replaced. And that replacement is going to occur every 30 days. Every 30 days. Every 30 days. Okay? Every 30 days. And that's why facial you can do only once a month. Because if you do more, you're going to go to deeper layers of the skin. And that is going to produce an irritation or lesions. You okay with that? Okay. So now the skin, they have 20, uh, 21 uh, square feet or 27, I said 21 square feet. And under that skin, we have a lot of vessels, a lot of arteries and, and veins. If you take all the vessels under the skin and put it in a line, you're going to have that under the skin, you have 11 miles of vessels. So that means almost uh, all the bay, the San Mateo Bridge that you walk. If you walk San Mateo Bridge, you know, it's taking about three hours to walk that normal walk. So that is about the skin. The skin is going to be changing with the time. The skin of the babies are different from the skin of the adults. And these skins are going to be different from elderly people. 
So we are going to understand that today. Now, go, uh, going away from what is the, the curiosities of the scheme, we are going to talk about most likely about more, more directly to the nursing process. The nursing process, the first thing you're going to do in the physical exam is going to be the assessment of the skin. So that's why it's relevant and important to know the details of the skin. Because in addition, the skin can give you, can give you uh, indicators that the patient having a disease. For example, if you have your hair, if you have hair loss, if you have hair, hair loss, if you have hair loss, that can be indicator indicating that you have some problem with the thyroid gland, hypothyroidism. If you have your nails, your nails are going to be like, a, how you call this when you, uh, drum sticks, right? If you know your finger, your finger is normal, right? Normal. But the, if they have some kind of bulging area, the fingers, you see finger with bulging at the, turn, at the ends. So these patients are having problems with, you can, that is telling you the problems, the patient is having problems, long data of respiratory problems or cardiovascular problems. Looking the nails, the looking, looking the nails, you're going to tell is they have low levels of proteins. I will show you that later on. Well, the lunula, lunula is the white portion of the, of the, of the nail, if there is too big, that means problems on the liver. And that is not homeopathic, it's medicine, okay? It's medicine. Okay, now, uh, uh, what else? Uh, okay. Ah, the, the skin, uh, in addition to that, we have uh, bacteria, bacteria. These bacteria, you have bacteria. Look at your arm, look at your hands, you have bacteria. This is the good bacteria. It's what we call the flora, the normal flora, F-L-O-R-A, flora, the normal flora. That is protecting against, against in, uh, in, uh, infections. So when the bad bacteria, bad bacteria is coming to the skin, the good bacteria, that is the flora, are going to kill this bad bacteria. Okay, because they are competing for space. And that's how it's going to be the skin actually helping you to um, to um, um, keep you healthy right one one more thing before we go to the to the nursing uh, when you uh, cook a chicken the chicken you put it in the oven you put the skin up or skin down or oh, doesn't matter that tell me I want to I, I'm very good cook by the way huh? Very good cook. You can tell me whatever you want to cook. I tell. No. Huh? No, whatever. I I know. Up or down? Huh? Up or skin down? down? Skin down or skin up? I do skin up. Skin up. Skin, skin up. up. Very well. So that's good. <laughs> I want to say it depends. What you're it making. depends. Yeah. Depends. All right. It's gonna cook either way. Okay. So Rachel, very good. If you put the skin the skin down after you cook your chicken is going to be like a cardboard, very dry. Right. It's going to be very dry. So the skin, if you put the skin up, the water with the heat or the moisture are going to evaporate. They're going to be blocked by the skin. So actually, if you cook the chicken with the skin up, the, the meat will be with use. It's not going to be dry. And that is what happened with the skin in your body. So the skin is going to be a barrier, a barrier to prevent the entry or exit of fluids. Homework, go to your kitchen and put a, your hand in the water. Your muscles are going to get wet? No, right? Because the skin. Now, when you are in Palm Springs, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, you stand up there and you feel your, your, your blood is boiling. Right? Are you going to, your blood is going to evaporate? No. Why? Because the skin is going to prevent that. So the, the chicken and the oven. All right? All right, so talking now about the nursing uh, <clears throat> and the importance about that is that you're going to start what, what we call the nursing process. It's nursing process. 
the nursing process are going process are going to start number one with with the assessment assessment <clears throat> what composed assessment the assessment is going to be the clinical history so the history of the patient so number two are going to be the laboratory test laboratory test lab test if that is required that is general for all the systems second or third is going to be the vital signs the vital signs or you can build vital signs and lab tests whatever but you need to sing in three and four of them and the, and the last one is the physical exam physical exam this is the process that you always need to follow always history lab test vital signs a physical exam. After that, it's coming the diagnosis, then it's going to be the planification, then the implementation, and then the actually the evaluation. So we are going to see that in another time. So assessment. Assessment, physical exam. And the first and number one thing you're going to check is the actually what we call the integumentary system. Integumentary system. <clears throat> you want to make it short, you will say the integumentum. Integumentum. Integumentum, okay? So what is the integumentum? Integumentum are going to be your skin, are going to be your hair, it's going to be, uh, what else? <clears throat> your nails, and it's going to be the mucosa. The mucosa, the oral, oral mucosa, especially. Okay, so you open the mouth, you check the nose, the mucosa of the nose, uh, actually the ears too, they can be checked. So those are actually part of what we call the integumentary system. So the first thing that you are going to do in the physical exam is to check the integumentary system, short integumentum. Integumentum means hair, hair, skin, nails, right, and mucosa. Be okay with that? All right. So, for example, uh, <clears throat> we already talked about mucosa. Uh, I mean, some examples are going to be very fast. Mucosa, when you have some lesions, openings, basically is a patient who will malnourish. Think about, for example, some example will be a homeless, right? Homeless is malnourished. They have vitamins, deficiencies, and they are going to have problems with healing process, right? So they are going to have some lesions in the mouth. Nails, I already explained you about that. Hair, when you have actually fall of the hair, they can have endocrine problems and the skin. And that is the focus of, uh, that I want to focus. A skin is something that you need to check. When at the moment that you are getting into the room of the patient, you ask the, the patient, what is your name? What is your uh, birthday? Whatever, right? So uh, the uh, uh, day of birth and uh, your birth, day of birth. And uh, actually, after that, you do you immediately you are looking at the patient from head to toe to check how is the integrity of the skin, and that is not enough. Why? Because you don't see in the back of the patient, and actually you need to move the patient from one side, move the patient to the other side in order to see if, for example, you have bed sores. How you are going to see bed sores if you don't move the patient? right? Bed sores or pressure sores are those pressures that when you lay down for a long period of time, they are actually compression of the skin against the, pre uh, against the bed, and these pressures are going to cut the blood circulation. No oxygen, no, no, no nutrients are going to lead into uh, an ulcer, okay? So, for example, is that skin. And what you need to do? So, patients who are very uh, 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 very severe disease, or actually it cannot move or in coma. So the indications on the doctor is telling you to move the patient from one side to change the pressures. And after 45 minutes, one minute, you're going to move the patient to the other side with pillows, etc. right? So that is what we are going to, from the, that point of view, we are going to uh, uh, talk about the skin today. This skin we will talk about in anatomy, physiology, again, but it's not the same. I'm going to add much more things. So this is the Christmas tree, Christmas tree, and we are going to put the decorations later on. All right, 
So let's get started with the skin and the skin disorders. Skin disorders, what are those? We are going to talk about uh, uh, burns, burns and uh, ulcers. So that is the two topics that we are going to talk at the end of the skin. All right. <coughs> okay, so number one. A uh, skin is the largest organ of the body, let's read now, and the first line of defense. Against what? Against microbes. Dehydration, that is the chicken in the oven, right? And harmful chemicals around you. So basically, it's a suit. It's going to basically protect you with a, uh, with a, uh, uh, from the environment. Okay? All right. So how many layers we have in the skin? In the skin, I'm going to go here. The skin are having three layers, three layers. Number one, the epidermis, epi means above, is the outer layer. We call, we don't call outer layer, we call epidermis because it's outer already, we know that. Dermis is the middle layer, all under the, the epidermis. And then we have the hypodermis. And we are going to elaborate each of them. All right, so for this, I want you to see epidermis here. So look at this. So what is the epidermis? So people get confused on this white area. Say, oh, this is epidermis. No, that is epidermis, yes. But there is not, there is more than that. So I'm going to draw it now. Epidermis is this. All is the epidermis. 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 All of these. Epidermis, epidermis, epidermis. Epidermis, 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 epidermis. All these two epidermis, of course, right? Epidermis. So that is the epidermis. So the epidermis are going to have, please the write it down, this is for the exam, are going to be having dead cells. Are dead cells. Uh, sorry. Uh, before that, the epidermis is going to have five layers. Five layers. Five layers. One layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers. So we have five layers, five layers. We're getting five layers, number one. Number two, the outer layer, the outer layer is called the stratus corneum or stratum, stratum corneus, corneum or corneum, the same, stratum corneum. This is stratocornium are dead cells, are dead cells, dead cells, okay? So where is the stratus corneum? The stratus corneum is just this. That is one of the five, I said five layers of the skin. That is a stratus corneum. This stratus corneum are going to contain a protein, question for the exam, contain a protein called the keratin, called the keratin, is the keratin, 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 okay? Keratin is a protein that is inside of the dead cells, okay? So the stratus corneum, that is the outer layer of the five layers of the epidermis, the more outer is the, actually, the cells, <coughs> dead cells who contain the keratin. Okay, so these are the cells who are going to slough off. Every 28 days, they are going to slough off. So I'm going to make some remark here. We have the first layer, that is the stratus corneum, right? The second layer, the third layer, the fourth layer, and fifth layer. So one, two, trying to graphic here, three, four, and five, the, the most inner layer, five. So five layers. All right, so this is important. So please pay attention to this. If the, the stratus corneum, when, when, not if, when the stratus corneum is going to slough off, are going to be out, the layer that is under is going to take the place. And second, take the place of the more uh, of the first layer. Then the third, the second layer is empty, so it's going to disappear, but it's going to take placed by the third layer, it's coming up. And the same thing, the fourth layer take place of the third and the fifth layer take place of the fourth. And this is going to reproduce, reproduce, reproduce cells. So the cells are going to slough off 
but the ones who are coming down are going to replace the one who is gone. Do you agree with that? So just the epidermis has five layers? Yes, just the epidermis has five layers. And the skin, I say they have three layers. Epidermis, the epidermis five layers. We have the dermis and the hypodermis. Are you okay with that? Yes. Hello? Yes. yes. Okay. The keratin, in addition, is a protein that produce, give, is going to make the skin impermeable impermeable to the water impermeable to water okay all right so all these two lines then you need to remember very well all right so let's go a little bit from what is coming in anatomy but i'm not going to tell you everything but i want just you to uh, think about the babies the babies they have a very thin skin right so oh baby skin oh you have a baby skin have baby skin. Now, other person they have, oh, your skin is older, right? So it's an early, early person skin, correct? And then the adult. So we have differences between a skin of early stage of uh, life, middle age, or adult age, and the early age. So why is that? Why is that? Because we have, I told you, adult, we have five layers, five layers. But in babies, the skin is more thinner. It's much more thinner. It's much more thinner. Why? Because instead to have five layers, they have only four layers, four layers. So what happened with the fifth layer? The fifth layer is going to be developing, still in the develop. So later on, when you get adult, boom, you have five layers. You okay with that? Now, when you have adult, you are adult, you have five layers, and when you get older, when you get older, you're going to have now, instead of five, you have four. In this case, you had one of the layers and that layer are going to be basically not, it's not going to, it's not going to appear anymore. It's going to disappear. It's a lucid, lucid layer. So we have five layers, each layer have a name. I'm not going to go on that. You don't need to know that. I'm not request you to know those five layers, the lucid, the stratum, the cornea, etc. No, I'm not going to go that, the basal. So just remember that. Now, so that's why the skin of the babies and the skin of the elderly people are more thinner. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. But the skin of the baby are thin, and the skin of the elderly is thin, but they are not the same. They are different, right? So why is that difference coming from? That difference is coming from a protein. This protein is called, uh, you see, you, you have uh, somebody using, using creams. Creams are called the, uh, what is that? Is the, my God, is the uh, collagen, my God. Collagen, I was thinking something else. Collagen is the collagen. Collagen is a protein. Remember that, please, collagen. Collagen is an elastic protein, elastic protein, elastic protein, elastic protein, elastic protein. This collagen, when you are very young, baby, you are more anabolic, anabolic. What does it mean, anabolic? Anabolic means you are building up, in this case, protein, that is the collagen. So this collagen is giving you the elasticity of your skin. So you don't have any wrinkles because you have a lot of collagen in your face. But when you get older, you get older, the, the wrinkles are going to start coming. Why? Because you are more catabolic as more age you are. So you are not anabolic, or you are more catabolic. So you do not produce as much collagen that you had uh, in the previous year. So that is the moment where you start having wrinkles in your face. You okay with that? Yes. And, yes. And the elderly people are going to be, because of that reasoning, you're going to have, you're losing the elasticity. In addition of that, you're losing elasticity. In addition to that, is the, the skin become more thinner. So that skin, elderly people are very fragile. Okay. 
All right, but this collagen is not just present on the skin. The collagen is present all over your body. The arteries, the veins become more harder when you get older. Why? Because there's less collagen produ produced by your body. Do you notice elderly people are getting slow and stiff in their muscles when they're moving? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Right? They, they become slow and more rigid, more stiff on the muscles and tendons because these muscles and tendons, they're going to have less collagen. So collagen is the elastic protein. And when you get older and older, you're losing that elasticity. So that's why they become rigid and stiff, the muscles. So they need to do a stretch out, et cetera, et cetera, All right? So you can prove of that when the person, for example, try to open the faucet of the, of the, of the bathroom, the faucet for water, or they're trying to open or close the door, they're taking much more time in order to open and close the, the, your hand, the hands. Why? Because they are losing the elasticity. They are losing the color. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So that is all. There is one more thing I will tell you about epidermis. And, and with that, we finish with epidermis, finally, right? So here we have here some cells. These, no, these cells are not layered, okay? but it's, on the, it's located on the bottom of the epidermis. These cells are going to be called the melanocytes. 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 These melanocytes are going to contain our cells, melanocyte, melano, melano is a pigment, cytes, cells. Is, these cells contain a pig, pigment, a pigment, that is called the melanin, melanin, melanin. This melanin is a pigment, and as more melanin you have in your skin, the, the more darker becomes the skin, okay, the melanin. Melanin, so people who are having fair skin, they have less melanin, okay? Your hair, for example, is black or is, uh, is blonde, so black hair, the darker the hair, the more melanin is going to contain your hair. The, the, if you are blonde, you don't have melanin in your, in your hair. You okay with that? And what is melanin doing? Melanin is important? Absolutely, yes. Why? Because they absorb, they're going to absorb the ultraviolet violet light. So it's what we call the UV light, UV ultraviolet light. So for that, it, that is important because in English they're asking you about uh, skin protectors or sunscreens, and we are going to talk about another time. So this um, um, uh, melanocyte contain melanin absorb the UV light. And that is important because people who has, who has having a lot of, of, of melanin or melanocyte, they have lower risk for skin cancer. Persons who are having a fair skin, very white, they have a higher risk for actually the uh, for skin cancer because they don't have that protection of the melanin. You okay with that? Okay. So one of the things that you need to remember is this: that the where is the where where are the melanocytes? Melanocytes are located in the in the epidermis, 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 epidermis. You okay with that? Yes. All right. Yes. So that is about the epidermis. So Let's when, your, about, hair, when sure. your hair is gray, or Sorry, it, when your hair is getting gray, does that mean you're losing the melanin and the hair strand? Yes. Why does it happen to only like one or two hairs and not all at once? <laughs> well, okay. I don't know, one or two hairs. Well, in general, is actually what happened is your hair become gray because there is less less blood supply and the melanocytes are actually what melanocytes are cells they're alive they need oxygen and they need they need what they need uh, um, nutrients so if you have with the time you start to have less uh, blood supply to the scalp of the of, of your head that is going to start become gray your hair okay thank you sure all right, so let's talk about the dermis. And let me see here, we have the, another um, uh, cartoon here. 
we have the dermis. Look at the dermis. All right, so listen to this. The dermis is where we have everything. Everything that I, if, if I, somebody is asking where is, what is, where is the, uh, the hair, where is the follicle of the hair, erector pili, with the sebaceous gland, what is the sweat, sweat gland, what is the vessel, the artery, the vein, the lymphatic, the terminal nerves. <laughs> so everything that I said is in the dermis, period. The only one that is not in the dermis is or are the melanocytes. So if you remember melanocytes, that is in the epidermis, whatever they ask him, where is this located? The rest is in the dermis. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now let's talk about the, the components of the dermis. The dermis, we have blood vessels. Where are the blood vessels here? This is the blood vessels. Blood vessels are arteries and veins. And these blood vessels, they have a lymphatic system too. It's not drawing this, but blood vessels. So that is where it's running the blood vessels in the skin at the level of the dermis. This is very important. Why? Because if you pinch your finger with a needle and there is no blood, you only was in the epidermis. But if you have a needle that is having some blood coming up, so that means that the needle went down to the dermis. Okay? All right. So nerve ending with sensory receptors of touch, pressure, and temperature. There is other receptors. Where are those, those receptors? Look at that. These are the receptors. This is the Pacini or corpuscle. We have the Kraus, the Meissner. We have never names. Do you need to remember those names? No. I want the concept, the Christmas tree again. So here's the terminal. It's not the one nerve. It's many nerves here that are going to create like a like a bud, B U D, right? And that is going to be where you have the sensation of the in the skin, the sensation of the skin. So the pressure, the the pain, the uh, touch, uh, the cold, the heat. So everything have a different receptors. So there is different receptors. I'm going, I'm going to prove you right now that. All right, so let's uh, let's have this salt. So I want homework, homework. I want you to take your, put your hands, put a, a pot with ice cubes, water, and put your hands on the ice cube for just a second or two seconds. So what do you feel? It's cold, right? So. It's cold, so what? It's cold, okay, cold. Nothing bad. No, okay. Now, the homework will be is to take that part of with ice and put it in your back. All the water. Right? Now, that is a difference, right? That is a, some difference, right? So what is telling you that? That the receptors for, for cold are basically concentrated on the back. And on the hands, we have less receptors for cold. You okay with that? Now, if I ask you to grab, for example, some object, a small, any object, a small object, if you close your eyes and I give you into your hands, so you are going to close, you can tell, oh, this is hard, this is soft, this is cold, this is hot, this is, uh, this is, uh, big, small, they have the shape, and probably with the closing eyes and touching with the fingers, you can recognize what is this object, correct? Now, I want you to do the same without knowing what is the object of before, put it that on your back. Most likely you will know what it is. You will not know if that is actually what is the shape or you will not able to recognize what is the object, correct? So what is telling you that? It's telling you that the receptors to detect pressures and to detect objects are going to be basically in your hands. And more than that, where are located? Basically on the tips of your fingers. On the tip of your fingers. So how we can translate that in nursing process? Okay, I will tell you. So you're going to take the pulse. Take the pulse. If you take the pulse, I will show you technique, how to take a pulse, because I say technique to take pulse is not whatever, right? So you're going to use, I'm going to put it this way. Uh, let me see. You're going to put, not like that. Let me see if I can do this. Mm -hmm. Not like that. 
you're going to do something like this. You're not going to go like that, of course, right? Like a fork. You're going to do something like that, more natural, right? And why is that? Because with the tip of the fingers is where you're going to feel most likely the pulse. And that when you are doing palpation of any part of your body, you're going to use basically the tips of your finger. Okay? So in medicine, the doctors, when I was a student, they was telling me, when do you know you are doing the best palpation? The best palpation is when you literally feel that your tip of your fingers are like eyes, your eyes. You have 10 eyes. Well, you, I do with eight eyes. Oh my God, what's that? Okay, let me stand up. This is automatic light, so I need to stand up for a moment. All right, so you're going to have actually the feeling that the tip of your fingers are going to be eyes, and you can see inside. It's you you are like not well. I'm not not a us, We are a machine, but we are better than a machine. Okay. All right. All right. So that is about the palpation and where are the receptors that we was talking. So receptor for heat, for cold, for pressure, for pain are distributed in different parts of the body. You okay with that? And one more thing, the skin is going to be thinnest and thicker. The skin that is more, the most thicker are going to be in your hands and in your soles of your feet. Why? Because that is what we are grabbing. Okay? And the, the more thinnest skin are going to be your eyelids. So that's why creams and all that, collagen and everything, in order to protect the wrinkles of the, of the uh, backs or whatever it is you call in the eyes. Okay? All right. We okay with that? All right. So let's keep moving. All right, so we have hair follicle, the hair follicle. The hair follicle is this. Uh, let me write it down here. This is the hair follicle. This is the hair follicle. This is the, the like the bulb of a, of, a, of a flower or plant. That is the follicle. This follicle where it's located is located in the dermis. This follicle, even though, please don't get confused, even though the hair is going to go passing the epidermis, we consider that the hair belongs to the dermis because that is the origin of the hair. Okay? All right. So the hair are going to be growing. And besides the hair, you have here a gland. This gland is called the sebaceous gland. This sebaceous gland is going to produce some oily, oily is okay? Oily is uh, write it down like this? Okay. Oily substance. Oily substance. Why is this oily substance? This oily, this oily substance is to keep the cover with some oily uh, 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 fluid covering your hair in order to prevent the hair to get dry, to get dry, okay? So homework, I don't want you to wash your hair for seven days. Don't wash it, don't make shampoo, nothing, not even water. And how is your hair is going to look in seven days? Very oily, very greasy, right? Why? Because of those sebaceous glands. So that's why if you wash your hair too, too often, your hair is going to get dry because you are getting rid of that oily substance. Yes. But nature is being there in order to protect your hair from dehydration of the hair. Got it? Okay. Next. What's the next? Okay, here we have a muscle. A muscle? Yes, we have a muscle. Each follicle, each follicle, I should read how many hairs we have. Okay, anyhow. All right, so we have each follicle, each follicle where is coming a hair are going to have this muscle. It's called the erector muscle, erector muscle. The other name is this, is the erector pili or hair erector. Erector pili, erector pili, pili. So, what is doing this muscle? These muscles are going to contract, making it smaller from here to here now. And what happened? The hair is going to erect, going up. Okay, how many of you you have that? How many of you you have uh, when you get upset, your hair actually are going to do this, right? 
Well, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I, I'm not a good example, but your hair is doing like this, right? Okay, so now, why is happening that, Karina? See, Karina is concentrated, excellent, Karina. So how is, how, why is that happening? So if you have, uh, you have a cat, okay, uh, when you get scared, their hair is going to be like this, right? Why? Because the animals, what they are doing is to try to appear bigger than they are in order to scare the, scare the enemy. And that happened in humans too. In humans, when you get upset, your hair, you see these cartoons in, uh, in the cartoons in somewhere, in Google, whatever, the hair is like this, right? So that is remnants of our evolution during the years. Then, oh, 20,000 years ago, let's imagine we are 20,000 years ago. 26,000 years ago, we don't have computers, we don't have cell phones, very sad, right? So, you are, we don't have clothes. You don't have any store to buy any clothes. So, what we was actually using, a skin of animals, right? It's animal skin to cover ourselves. At that time, 20,000 years old, or more probably, our body was totally covered by hair totally covered by hair because we didn't have clothes to wear off and the weather, especially cold weather, was killing many people, many people, many, many people, okay? And that's why, well, I'm going to do a little bit more. That's why people are now getting fat is very, fat is very attractive for us. Why is very attractive for us the fat? So you you will prefer you prefer a protein bar or you prefer a bacon, right? So what do you prefer? Just a little bit taste of bacon. You prefer the bacon. That is the human nature. Why? Because twenty thousand years old or, or ago or more, people was dying with cold, and they knew that eating fat is going to survive, because eating fat you're going to have more insulation of the, of the, against the cold. From that, thousands and thousands of years of repetition in our mind, in our, in our head, we know that we prefer fat than other, 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 other food. And the hair, what is doing here? The hair, what is doing is to protect us from the weather. But in addition to that, the erector pili, the, 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 let's go back to the, to the follicle that is going to erect, right? So what is doing, why is doing that when you have cold? When you have cold, you see your, your uh, goose spams, like goose, how you call it? goose bumps, right? Goose bumps, okay? Why is that? Be that is a remnant of our evolution. Because when the hair, when we was having a lot of hair, the hair was doing this erect, that this moment is where you are going to trap some, mo some bubbles of air. You trap air, bubbles of air, and these bubbles of air is helping you to insulate you from the from the cold. Okay, so that is the erector pili. Erector pili. Okay with that? So where is the erector pili? Is located in the dermis. In the dermis. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now we have the sebaceous glands. We already talked about the sebaceous glands. This is the sebaceous glands. We have, uh, should be this in this um, same um, line, drain oil to moisturize the hair. We already talked about that. Sweat glands into the hair follicle skin. So here we have in addition the sweat glands. This is the sweat gland. When you sweat, these sweat glands are going to start where it's going, where it's located in the dermis. But they're going to drain in the surface of the skin. So what for we sweating? Do you know why we're sweating? I'm going to explain you after a few moments. Okay? So, the, and then, so that, that is all about the dermis. Don't forget about the, the, the nerve endings. Don't forget about the nerve endings. Don't forget about the, the, the vessels, the, 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 the arteries and veins. Somehow, they can, you can help to remember that. That vein, artery, nerves. And then you can companion with the follicles, with the glands, sebaceous glands, with the sweat glands. Sweat glands is liquid, fluid. Sebaceous glands is oily. Okay? All right. Tell me, where is, where are the melanocytes? Everybody, where are the melanocytes? Epidermis. 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 The rest, 
is in the dermis. You okay with that? Yes. Now, just finishing with the hypodermis, hypodermis is the, oh my God, it's 820, eight oh, okay. Talking hypo, uh, hypodermis, this, below this uh, hypodermis is called the subcutaneous tissue. Is the other name, subcutaneous tissue. This actually is loose fat. That is the classification of the connective tissue, right? So subcutaneous tissue is the transition between the skin and the muscle, because under this uh, uh, connective, uh, this uh, subcutaneous tissue or hypodermis is the same. Below that, we have the muscle. You okay with that? All right. Is that clear? Yes. 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 All right. So now let's go to the functions of the skin. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, six of that. All right, so let's start with the first one. Protection of organism from microbes and dehydration. The top layer, stratus corneum, are cells filled with keratin, waterproof in or out. You got it? Only through the sweat pores. So they are going to eliminate fluid uh, of the, with the sweat glands. And why is that? We are going to explain that in a few moments. Because of keratin, only fat, okay, so let's, I don't want to go jumping, jumping. So let's go here. Protection of microbes and dehydration, the skin of the, in the open, huh? all right? Okay, perfect. The reg this part is going to be um, explained this, uh, in this part too. Regulation of the body temperature. When you have regulation of the body temperature, when, tell me, when you are, when you are in 120 degrees Fahrenheit, Palm Springs, that is a place, very nice place, by the way, <clears throat> your you, your cheeks become red, yes or no? Yes. Okay? Yeah. Why yes. become cheek, your cheek become red? Why? Because when you have 100, 120 Fahrenheit, I'm giving an example, you, you can be red in 100 or 105, whatever, right? 90, right? You start to put cheeks become red. Why become red? Why? Because these vessels, these vessels are going to, are going to what we call, are going to vasodilate. Vasodilate. What is vasodilation? Vasodilation. Vasodilation means the vessel is like this. Now the vessels are going to be vasodilated. We write it down with VSD. Vasodilation. Vasodilation. So that is what happened with the heat. So the vasodilation, the vessels are going to get closer to the surface of the skin. Closer, closer. See, goes deeper, now it gets closer. And that is basically can see through the skin because the vessels, the blood are running under your skin. So because the vessels get closer to the surface of the skin, you can see that redness. We okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, in addition to that, what is happening? What is happening is that the sweat glands are going to sweat. You're going to sweat, right? And they have actually uh, water on the skin. Water on the skin. Water on the skin. All right, so what happened with the water on the skin? The water on the skin are going to evaporate. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, so I want to just give, give you an example. Homework. Go, don't do it. So don't do this home. <laughs> Go to the kitchen and put a pan, a fry pan on the on the kitchen and the stove. And okay. then you're going to just open the thing and the and the fry pan is going to be very hot. Correct? Okay. So what you're going to do next? You're going to take the fry pan and put it in the cold water. Open the faucet and what happened? A lot of smoke coming up. Correct? If you put your hand, don't do it. If you if you put your hand on the smoke on the fumes there, it's very hot. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. And that heat, where it's coming from? It's coming from the fry pan. So then after that, you touch the fry pan and it's totally cold. Why? Because all the heat was coming out with the fume in the evaporation process. That is what happened with the who is the fry pan? You. Who is the water? is going to be the uh, the sweat. 
So the sweat, what it's going to do is to evaporate and taking the heat from the skin, especially from the vessels who are very close to the, to the skin. That's why it's called basal, this happen vasodilation. And they're working together in order to control the temperature of your body. That's what we call the regulation of body temperature. You okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, excellent. One more thing. When you are when you are cold, when you are cold, when you are cold, let's go to Alaska. You know Alaska? Alaska is nice. But a little cold here, right? So you have you go to Alaska and your your temperature is going to be, let's put it, uh, minus 20. Uh, minus 20 degrees. Minus 20, 20 Fahrenheit. So what happened? What happened with your skin? You become pale or no? Yes. Right? Oh. When you become pale, that means these vessels, the vessels, the arteries and veins, what they're going to do is the opposite. They are going to go into vasoconstriction, very thin. It's going to be called, I'm going to write it down, vasoconstriction. Basal constriction, the vessel is like this. Now the vessel is like this. So it's going to decrease in size. Why? Because they're, and they're going to get more deeper, are going to get deeper into the skin. Why they do that? Why did they do that? Because they want to keep the, the temperature of the, on, on the, on, of the blood, making the blood flow going deeper into your body. You okay with that? And that's why, because we go, we go deeper away from the skin, you become pale. Okay with that? Yes. 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 But after a while, when you keep, for example, a, a homework, homework, go and put some, um, some, uh, uh, I mean, bucket with ice. And when you see, when you were a kid, right? When you were a kid, uh, let's make a competition. Who can stand more in the parties, right? Who can stand more with the hands in the eyes, right? Right? And that becomes very painful, right? And it becomes red. Do you see? Red, blue, even red, right? Red, then blue. So why it become red? Why become red? Why? Because when you have cold, the vessels are going to produce basal constriction. But this basal constriction can do, cannot be... Uh, cannot be for a long period of time. It's a reflex that after certain time of cold, the vessels are going to dilate as a reflex. And that produces redness on the skin. But the first thing that is happening when you are cold is the pale skin, pale skin. You okay with that? Yeah. All yes. right, excellent. We have collection of sensory information. We have the pressure, of the receptors, thermoreceptors or for hot, for, for cold, pain receptors, the receptors that we was talking. So that is the actually the receptors. These receptors are located where? In the dermis. And uh, one thing is the production of vitamin D. Yes, we produce vitamin D. We produce vitamin D. You create vitamin D. But don't get confused, please because we have two sources of vitamin D. One source of vitamin D is go, one source of vitamin D is the, is the diet. And the second source, homework, go to the outside, put your arm or your body under the sun, and you are saying, oh my God, I'm producing vitamin D. You're producing vitamin D. So you are a mach no machine, you are a factory of vitamin D. So what is doing the vitamin D? Vitamin D, what it's doing is to absorb calcium. At what level? At the level of the intestines. Intestines are going to make, a, 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 after the vitamin D is activated in the kidney, because, all right, so I will explain. So the vitamin D diet and the vitamin D formed by the skin are going to go into your bloodstream. This vitamin D is not working yet. It's not working. They need to be activated. And who is activating that? Is the kidney. Yes, the kidney. The kidney is activating the vitamin D. And that is the moment where the vitamin D starts to work to absorb calcium in the intestines. Do you okay with that? Is that yeah. clear or no? All right? Okay. Yes. 
All right, so other things, excretion of electrolytes. When you sweat, run, another homework, taste your sweat. If you taste your sweat, it's salty. Salty, salty right? Excellent. Because we are losing sodium, potassium, chloride. We, have, we are losing electrolytes, electrolytes, electrolytes. So do you see tennis? Tennis, uh, I, I play racquetball. I don't play tennis. But when you sweat a lot, these play, tennis players are going to, these tennis players are going to, after four hours of an intense hot sun, right? They start to sweat a lot and they have cramps, correct? Yes or no? Yeah. I said in the previous class, right? And what they are doing is take the banana and take the banana. Why? Because in the sweat, you're losing sodium, potassium, chloride, and the banana is a good source of potassium. That is the one who causes cramps. Okay? Okay? Yes. Yeah. How to remember that potassium causes cramps? Okay, I'm going to... Oh, my God. I think it's going to fit. Okay, how, how the potassium, the lack of potassium produces cramps? Just remember this. Okay? Yes. In the lower extremities, right? Basically, in the lower extremities. All right, so absorption of some fat-soluble vitamins. For these, you're going to have you need for example you have ointments and creams that you use in your skin right we have creams and ointments okay remember that the skin is going to repel water because water are not going to be a, it's not easy to absorb the cream uh, uh, the water so the cream is more watery and the ointment is more oily Okay, so when you apply to the skin, the, the, the best absorption are going to be the oily or the ointment. Why? Because watery, the cream have more water content. Oh my God, the light's coming ago. So the, 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 the cream contain more water is going to be a little bit more difficult to absorb. For the cream, you need to rub it very much, like two, three, five, five minutes in order to make the ingredient get absorbed by the skin. The ointment is going to be more easier because it's not going to be repelled by the skin. So it's going to stay longer, the vitamin. Uh, so uh, some, some products that we are going to mention in a few moments. So why is called ointment? Why oil, how to remember? Oi, 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 ointment, or oh, oh, oily. Oily. Ointment is a cream. You okay with that? That is where it's coming the word ointment. Okay? So... Uh, for example, you have vitamin, uh, the vitamins who are going to be absorbed easily or are going to be the fat-soluble vitamins. We talk about that, right? Fat-soluble vitamins. What are those? Is the vitamin A, D, E, and K. So how to remember? Fatic. Fatic. All right. So saying that, let's go to the uh, ulcers. The ulcers now that you know very well about epidermis, I mean, the, the, the skin you're going to have, uh, basically, a, this is very easy. A skin uh, disorder. So we have, uh, we have bed ulcers. Bed ulcers, okay? And these bed ulcers are going to be for people, or patients who are laying down for a long period of time, for whatever reason. Right, you need to mobilize, and that is part of the work of the nurse. So now, here we have a stage one, two, three, and four. A stage, a stage. I'm talking about the stages. The stage one is going to involve the epidermis. A stage two, the dermis. A stage three are going to basically go. Uh, uh, we have we have the epider the. Um, Subcutaneous tissue that is going to be basically on the borderline with the muscle. Subcutaneous tissue. So see epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous. And stage four is when they go in deeper layers from the muscles to the bones. I saw ulcers that I was really touching the bone. The sacral area is very common to have that. Very sad. But even you touch it, you can touch, I can see it with one eye and touch it. So 
there is ulcers. So bed ulcers, one, two, three, and four. We okay with that? Okay. Yes. Yes. So now let's talk about the burns. Burns. I, we can talk a lot about the burns, but I'm going to exactly go to the point because of time. So we have the first degree, first degree, second degree, and the third degree. The burns, the burns superficial or first degree, we have the partial thickness or called thick second degree burn, most commonly called second degree burn, and the third degree. The first degree, let's go to the beach, let's go to Cancun. And you have this redness of your skin, redness, right? So redness. So you have redness and redness and some pain, some pain. That is first degree, period. Redness or some pain, that is first degree. Second degree, second degree is going to be redness. It's going to be very painful. And what is the difference between the first degree and second degree? You have blisters. What are blisters? Are vesicles. And what are vesicles? Vesicles or blisters are elevations of the skin with fluid content. Ele elevation of the skin with fluid content. Okay? So, so you see blisters, elevation with fluid, or vesicles with fluid, that is second degree. And it's very painful very pain. The third degree is going to get deeper. So the first degree basically is the epidermis. The second degree is going to be the dermis. And it's going to start destroying the terminal nerves. And when you go deeper than that, you actually, you have, actually we have redness, black, black because it really burn and painless. There is no pain. Why? Because you already destroy the, you're already in the hypodermis, in the subcutaneous tissue. So you already destroy all the terminal nerves. So that's why it's painless. We okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So let's go to the first part of the lecture. Exactly, I have 20 minutes. So this is exactly what I have in the pre in the morning. <laughs> okay. All right, so how to start do doing this? <clears throat> so we are going to talk about mitosis. Talking about mitosis. And we have meiosis. I need to talk about meiosis in the next class, but meiosis is going to be only happening cell division. We are talking about cell division. It's going to be in the gonads. If you don't know this name, perfect. Gonads are the, up, uh, the reproductive organs. Reproductive organs. So what are those reproductive organs? The testicles. Ovaries. Those are the gonads. So that is what happened in meiosis. Meiosis we are going to see in next class. Mitosis is, I mentioned this because the only part of the body who, got, who are going to happen meiosis is in the gonads. And the rest of the body are going to be mitosis. The rest, your hair, your nails, your whatever, everything, your, your liver, your bones, everything is mitosis. Okay? All right, so mitosis, we are going to have a cell who have this nucleus here, and we have the DNA, the double helix nucleus, the double helix, okay? The double helix. So that is, the, the cell is going to do all these functions, producing proteins, whatever you are, they are doing, right? Whatever they are doing. But then they decide to go into cell division. When they go into cell division, the cell are going to have, they are going to basically uh, disappear the nuclear membrane, the nucleus, the nuclear membrane are going to disappear. And the DNA that is here are going to, as I show you in this image here, this is the DNA. The DNA is going to be carried in pieces, 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 pieces. And they are going to coil. How many pieces are going to be, uh, be uh, uh, they are going to be divided in 46 pieces. Those are 46 chromosomes. 
these 46 chromosomes, so each piece is divided, is cut it like a, a cheese and a, a knife, you're going to have that this each piece, oh my God, each piece of the of the DNA are going to coil, recoil, and they are going to form the chromosomes. Chromosomes. How many chromosomes we have? We have 46 40. chromosomes. Excellent. That is the same to say 23 pairs of chromosomes, correct? That is the same to say 2N chromosomes. That is, you, you saw that before, right? All called deep, di diploid. Those are the same. 46 chromosomes, 20 pair, 23 pairs, 2N, diploid. That is basically the same thing. Okay? All right. So now, here we have the cell division. So now I want to tell you, if you take the DNA out from one cell only, only for one cell, we have 100 trillion cells. If you take the DNA for one of these cells as a cord, like a wire, it's going to take about uh, how much? Uh, six feet long, six feet long. Can you imagine 100 trillion cells? They have six feet long DNA in the nucleus. Wow, it's, it's amazing, right? All right, so these cells, I want just to let you know, the DNA double helix are going to turn into chromosomes, into chromosomes, and, they are, and when they are going to finish the cell division, they are going to return. They are going to return the nuclear membrane and the DNA in chromosomes are going to put together and they are going to reconstitute the DNA double helix. Is that clear or no? We okay with that? Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. Now, if you have, for example, if you have a, um, a lace from your shoes, sometimes it's, when it's too long, it's going to get tangled. Yes or no? But the DNA never get tangled. So how is that happen? Because the, the DNA is to go is going to be organized in some way. What is that way? The way that is going to be like this. Look at that. So this is the length of the, the yellow, ye yellow is actually the, the DNA, and they're going to be organized by, by these round structures. They're like balloons that are going to be around, uh, going to, the DNA is going to get around, wrap around of these proteins. These proteins are called the histones, histones, histones. So what are histones? Histones are proteins that help to organize the DNA. You okay with that? Yes. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, uh, all right, so when I mentioned, oh my God, okay, I used that. This cell, when you have like this, and this cell, when you have it like this, the DNA here, when it's visible before the cell division is called the chromatin. And these are going to be called the chromosomes. Chromosomes. Chromatin, if you put together the chromatin and together the chrom so the all chromatin is equal to say the whole chromosomes together. They just change appearance. This is no cell, no dividing yet, but this actually when they go to cell division, they are going to have this shape. You okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now let's keep going. The chromosome are going to draw it like this. Okay. Well, we have two. <laughs> All right. So too big, I guess. Well, anyhow. So the chromosome. The chromosomes are going to be these arms. Okay. And these arms are going to have different. They have names. But this portion is called the centromere. Centromere. Please don't get confused with the centriole. The centriole. The centriole, remember, are those organelles who are going to go to the poles of the cell. They are going to be the cowboys with the, with the cows. The cowboys are going to be the centriole who are going to lace the chromosomes to pull it when after the cell division happen. So after the chromosomes uh, multiply, they're going to pull to the poles of the cells in order to separate the cells and complete the cell division. All right, so don't get confused for that. 
Centromere is the central portion, central portion, is the central portion of the chromosome. Okay? So now, here we have one portion that is important. This end of the chromosome, this is called the telomere. Very interesting. So listen to this, huh? Telomere. Telomere with E. Telomere. No, oh my God. Telomere. The telomere. This telomere, telomere, in every sing single cell division, in every single cell division, the cell division, one after another, the next cell division are going to have a smaller telomere. So, for example, the first, the first, you have a division right now, division, this is all this, what I wrote down uh, right, uh, is actually the, cent the, the telomere. The, telo the, the telomere are going to get shorter and shorter for the next cell division. Shorter and shorter, it disappear. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, so the first division are going to be the chromosome like this. The second division or next divisions are going to be a smaller. And this next division is going to be a smaller. Why? Because less and less of the telomere are going to go away. There is a moment that is so tiny that the cells are not able to reproduce. And what happened? Death. And that is actually the time that the cells are the cells are going to survive. So not all the cells, when you get older, are going to still reproduce. Some cells are going to just not reproduce anymore. And that is what we call dead program. Dead program or dead DAD. Well, okay. Dead program are going to be called the apoptosis. 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 We okay with that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Just to make an application about this. The cortisol, and we almost want to finish, I guess. The cortisol, uh, uh, when you, tell me, when you get a stress, when, oh, okay, so cortisol is a stress hormone. We know that already, right? So who, who is the stress hormone? The cortisol. Okay. Tell me one thing. The stress hormone. Do you see people who are stressed all the time? for a long period of time. They get older, fast faster. Yes, right? They get older. Why? Because you know what? The cortisol stimulate the cell division. So you have more cell divisions. The cells are going to divide and divide and divide. Okay? Because this, when you are stressed, you have a lot of cells who are gone because other situations, for example, free radicals, etc., are going to interact, destroying the cells. So cortisol is elevated, and the cortisol, when you are stressed, you're going to make the cells divide faster. So that's why a person who are stressed all the time become older, faster than others. Okay? But now, tell me, you want to live 200 years? Let's live 200 years. No, why you say no? No, life is beautiful. Life is beautiful. We have bad scenes, good scenes, but life, we need to be thankful for that. All right? So we need to enjoy every second that we have. Anyhow, whatever. So the, there is an enzyme that is called the, the en, this enzyme that is going to make the cell division, the cell divide, and the telomere divide is called the telomere. The telomerase, ACE again, telomerase. So this enzyme is the one who are going to make the telomere to divide and get smaller. So what about if we block this enzyme? We block the tel telomerase. So the telomere, telomere are going to be always the same size, yes or no? Right? No. Yeah. yeah. The telomerase, what it's doing is to make the telomere divide. Divide and divide. And each division, the telomere is going to be a smaller and smaller, getting closer to the dead cell. If you block the telomerase, the telomere are going to stay the same size in each division. So that's why you're going to be able to live 150, 200 years. So, at your 50 years old, at your 60 years old, 
you're going to still be a teenager, right? So, yeah, so probably adult life, the social security will be 150, 160, I don't know, okay? So I don't know if we will be working that long, but anyhow. So that is the future, and there's studies about that, okay? All right, just to finish this, we have eight minutes and 30 seconds. What is coming? What is this? Okay, let me see if I forget something. Oh, okay, this one. This one are actually what we call a, chromos a chromosome map. Chromosome map. This chromosome map, we have here the mother and the father chromosome. So we have 23 pairs. 23 pairs. So you see one, two, three, four, 22. And this pair is 23 pairs. 23 pairs. That is the same to say 2N. That is the same to say deployed. I write it down many times. Okay. So this is one chromosome. But don't get confused. Look at this. This chromosome is like this because the branches are very tight together. So this is, I'm going to redraw it. This is one of the branches, another of the branch another of the branch, another branch here. So another branch here. So that is one chromosome of the mother and the other chromosome from the father, equal, okay? All right, so now I'm going to explain why it's chromosome one, two, three, and one time. So all these chromosomes you see here are going to be called autosomal chromosomes. Autosomal or somatic. Because this, in these chromosomes are the recipes to produce your nose, your nail, your, your hair, your eyes, your feet, your, your hands, everything. Your liver, your heart. That is the recipe to produce all these organs. And this one pair, one pair, is one pair is going to be the sexual chromosome. That is what is giving you the gender. One pair, one pair plus 22 pairs here. We have 22 pairs, see, 22 pairs is going to be 23 pairs. So all this is the chromosome map. Why we need to know that? Because there is some pathologies that's coming next class are going to be affecting the sexual chromosomes. Sexual chromosomes are going to be affecting, for example, do you know somebody who is color blind? Are is colon blindness, suffer from color blindness. That is because the sexual chromo one of the sexual chromosomes are going to be affected. In the future, we are going to learn why male are more affected than female. So that is another class. So but sexual chromosomes, they have specific diseases. Autosomal chromosomes are going to be problems, for example, in Down syndrome, in the chromosome, an extra chromosome 21. Or we have Edward syndrome, chromosome 18. Or you have Le Cri du Cat in chromosome number five and many others. So those are actually malformations. And that is something that we will talk in next classes. Okay? Oh my God. It's dark in my head. I need to stand up. Okay, move, move. Okay, there you are. All right. And the last part that we I have five minutes. We are going to talk about the cell cycle. All right. All right, so I'm going to make a summary. And with that, we complete the lecture today. Okay? So now, we have the cell division, and the cell division are going to have different parts, phases. Number one, the prophase. Number two, the metaphase. Number three, the anaphase, and number four, the telophase. Give me a name with, with, because the students have problems to remember the difference between anaphase and telophase. Telophase, telophase, give me words with telophase, with tele. Tele, telescope, television, telephone, right? So those are actually Tele means the distance. Television, you see to the distance. Telescope, the same. You see from the distance, right? Uh, the distance, uh, uh, far away. Um, um, 
uh, television, telephone, you hear from far away, right? So telephone is the farthest phase of the mitosis. This is mitosis, okay? Prophase, what you have is the pro, 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 pre, 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 pro, pre, pre, pro, preparation for the cell division, preparation for the cell division. What is happening here? So you have the cell that, that I'm going to draw here, the nuclear membrane is going to disappear and they are going to start forming the chromosomes, the chromosomes, and they are going to multiply, are going to duplicate the chromosomes, duplicate chromosomes, duplicate chromosomes. They're going to duplicate. Then what happened in the metaphase? In the metaphase, the chromosomes are going to align in the equatorial line. Equatorial line. Where are these? Here. So we have here, we have, here we have already 46 chromosomes. They are going to duplicate. We have 92 chromosomes. Here in this metaphase, we have a line 46 in one side and 46 in another side. Then is coming the centrioles, the centrioles, and they are going to lace the cows, I mean the chromosomes. And then what happened in anaphase, they are going to, the centrioles start to pull the chromosomes. They are going to initiate the separation, initiate the division. So you're going to have here this, the centrioles are here, and, the, and this start to have some kind of narrowing because they start to divide, and the chromosomes are not in the center anymore. They are going to get close to the poles, P-O-L-E, poles. And then what happened? The telophase is where it's going to have the strangulation are going to totally separate the cells with the chromosome here. At the end, what you're going to have, two cells with equal number of chromosomes. All this process is called the cytokinesis. Question for the exam. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so all right, so thank you so much for uh, being here. I thank you for your effort and for your time and the dedication for the course. I hope that this class, I'm not going to ask everybody what is happening with the class, how you feel about the class. Uh, we are actually, everybody's exhausted, it was a long day. And I thank you so much. If there is any comment or anything you want to add, or you want to tell me, you can call me, or you can stay until the end of the of the of this uh, recording. I'm going to stop the recording right now, and uh, yeah, for at this moment, I'm going to say help, uh, thank you so much for coming, and I wish you to have the best uh, week. And um, yeah, thank you. So, thank you. All right. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.